Now, if I don't look at you when I speak, that means I'm just gathering. I get nervous making eye contact. I know, but you've known, you and I have known each other for a very long time. Yeah, have we started? Did you roll into this thing? No, I did do it the way I do it. No, but sometimes they start recording and then. No, no, no. There's an in music. There's an intro. There's a. There's a fucking. Oh, there's. Yeah, we have a way of doing it. Oh, I see all the wires. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We have a way of doing and it. And we're on cam. Okay, good. I cam like it. This place is really good spot. It, it, it's, it's not you know fancy like some of your friends. I like you have it. Very it, fancy friends. Some, but. <laughs> Are you talking about Zach or... No, I'm just, I'm just making it just a general statement that you have fancy friends. Maybe back in the day. Maybe I, I don't push it. You don't, don't have fancy friends. I do. What do you mean fancy? Famous? Rich? Yeah, fancy. Nice houses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeff Ross? That's pretty fancy. He's got a nice fancy, house, but everyone's oh, have invited you, to have, that. Have you, I, <laughs> I know, I've been there. That pool with the... And, it, and it, you can look in through the window. Yeah. Door, yeah. The... I mean, I know baseball guys, but I don't push it. I feel like they have too much to lose. Like, why do you want to get involved with me, the guy who flips out at Starbucks? We'll talk about that later. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm are in we, a good are place. Are we starting or no? Yeah. Okay, George. Go ahead. Five, four, three, two, one. Because it's the best day of my life are coming for me, waiting to be realized. I keep my eye on that prize. It's the new song that I like, I've been listening to lately. It's by Lizzie, okay. and it's called Best Days. And um, I'm really, that's my week. Like when I wake up, yeah. that's the week. That's the week, that's the song that ha enters my head and I walk around in life. Okay. Okay, so it's called Best Days, everybody. Welcome to, um, Taco Belly. Taco Belly. I'm trying to do a different accents lately, as of late, but Tiger Belly. Yeah. Um, we're sometimes in the top 100 in podcasts. Mm -hmm. Sometimes not. Sometimes, sometimes not. not. Hey, no, sometimes, sometimes not. not. We sometimes were 88th not. last sometimes week. Not. We're doing okay. We're doing good. We're, we're staying afloat. That's all it matters. What do you think? We're a boat. Yeah. We've got Gilbert. We've got uh, my beautiful um, Filipino flower. <laughs> What's your name? Kalila. <laughs> it's an old bit. <laughs> it's an old bit. <laughs> don't. Don't do nothing. Uh, I met Bryce's girlfriend last night. Amazing. Yeah, really nice. Dry lips, but that's uh, that's the only thing. <laughs> Wait, that's that, the only thing that is, I would. What does that mean? Dry. It's just like a little dry for me, but that's fine. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> her personality is great. She plays Stardew Valley. Yeah, yeah. The, the whole reason why I'm in Stardew Valley is because of his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. She's got a you know hip kind of farmer vibe about her. Yeah. Yeah, but she's also like, it's she's got a little bit of like the movie Seven. Mm. You know what I mean? It's raining. It's a city. It's dirty. I like it. You know what I mean? Dry lips. I met George's um, off and on on again girlfriend last night. Side I piece. Talk about yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> thank you for the permission. George. Yeah, thank I you. Guess. I'm fucking gonna. All right. So I, I'm not gonna get into it, but um, there's some been some tragedies. We had this shooting in um, Florida. We're not gonna talk about it because mm. we don't talk about stuff like that. It's a fucking that was a disaster for our nation. But another disaster happened. George just said at the fucking improv last night. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? I mean, we have it, we have some footage, right? We're gonna put it on. We'll put it. We'll put it out somewhere on a vlog or something. Yeah. But um, I taped it and I was taping it on my phone. And I, I think at one point, you, yeah. you're, Gilbert was sitting next to me. What four hundred seats? Do you think? Yeah, four hundred 500, people. Yeah. We have four or five hundred people on it. And um, I distinctly remember going, light them. This is the worst that it could be. And not even joking. Like, you were yeah, panicking. Yeah, it was the worst. He and was then freaking out. George walks off stage, and he goes, ah, I think I did pretty good. <laughs> so confident. I want him over. You know, I'm charming. Mm. Anyway, um, that's that, and this is this. And uh, we have a very, very special guest with us tonight. Wow. Um. I've known him. I feel like I've known him all of my comedy career. He is enigma. He's an enigma. It's a great word. He is um, a comedy staple mm. in the LA comedy scene. Um, he's probably warmed up for every fucking TV show. He's used to Chelsea. And let's just say his name, Brody Stevens. Everybody, clap your hands. Yeah, I'm you very excited about today. So am I. Uh, why are you excited? Because you're a good guy. I haven't done this podcast before. You have. <laughs> 
your I like your energy. You like you've have you always liked my energy or yeah. have have we had the problems before? I've never had problems with no, you. No, never. You're, you're, but you're a working guy. I consider you one of the uh, upper echelon comedians. And <laughs> so at the comedy store, I don't like to. I know you're busy, but <laughs> you could just talk to me for like thirty seconds, a minute, and I feel it's sincere and yeah. I get it, and I'm and I'm good with that. I right. like that. You yeah, know? yeah. And if yeah. I do want to speak longer you're open to that too right i've been on tv shows where you were the guy in the a warm-up yeah warm and then up you'll, you've, ta TV you've talked to me before like yeah you've like given me like you know encouragement from the from the, from the audience oh yeah oh yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that's a big part of doing audience warm-up is taking care of the guys on the panel making sure the audience <laughs> is connected with them you break that ice because they get nervous in the studio they're they're intimidated by oh, seeing celebrities right so <laughs> I would take pride in the audience warm up because I was I'm a comedian too. I'd be on the shows. So I yeah. kinda know what it's like to have a TV audience or an audience that's into it and being real. It's a shit job though, do you think? Um, I mean it's last to be hired, first to be fired. There's that. Oh, uh -huh. But if you get on a good show like Chelsea you, how long how many did Chelsea's how many years? I did like four hundred episodes. I did quite a bit. That's a lot of fucking episodes of being a warm up on a show. Mm -hmm. But nope. yeah, what else have you done? I did best damn sports show about a thousand shows. Oh there. my fucking god, great! That's and, a lot. And then I did the first two seasons of At Midnight on Comedy that's Central. Right. I did The Burn. I did Jezelnix. Yeah, I that's did ridiculousness. How, yeah. Oh my god. So yeah, I mean when you're doing the three panel comedian high energy show, that's uh, a big part, and that takes a while. Like getting to Chelsea, you have to build up. When I was at Best Damn Sports Show, they'd always be bringing in new executive producers. You start over, and yeah. then you go to a work on a show. Oh, Brody, can we use you for the day on another show? You go in, and a lot of times, you're at the mercy of the stage manager or the executive producer. What is this guy doing? He's yelling. I don't get it. And you you get problems getting gigs sometimes right. because of that. Was there, was there a, I don't I don't recall, maybe, was there a scuff at Chelsea? Yeah. How did that end? It ended well. But how, what was the scuff? Uh, the scuff was, um, first of all, I loved working at Chelsea. No, she let me push it there. Never gave me any problems. Nothing, you know, normal, not, nothing with Chelsea, but normal, just stuff. Okay. It was a good experience. It was everything. It was everything I learned from Best Damn Sports Show. Yeah. I put it into Chelsea. It was right. more satisfying, actually. You know, Best Damn was actually like more fun being around all these athletes, being a baseball player and idols and heroes. But Chelsea was like more satisfied as we're like real professional gig career based um yeah i liked working there and i just remember one day there was a it was a holiday yeah and we had to do a couple extra tapings on a saturday because chelsea was ho hosting some award show so it was a holiday like president's day and there was just not a lot of energy guys were because it was on a saturday you know that building over there with the hulu and all the offices but nobody was around except chelsea's show so guys were kind of like coasting that day this is this particular show and i couldn't get the audience warmed up because i take it personally if they laugh or don't laugh and how they well are. you're a comedian you're I'm a professional a, i'm a professional exactly <laughs> thank yeah. you yeah 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 and it was uh, it was a Saturday. I get why they were doing it. I'm just saying it was frustrating that particular day. So I went out in the hallway, yeah. and I kind of vented a little bit to the booker, and he Michael Cox. Yeah, I mean we've talked about it. I'm friends, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Trigger name. And and I I went out there and I basically said, hey, these guys are. I'm trying to warm up the audience, you know, for comedians you book. I'm trying, but these guys are like bugging me the crew guys were like messing with me the the audio there was because it was like a saturday let's let's goof with brody but it's yeah. like guys i got to do my job yeah so anyway michael didn't take kindly to that like what are you doing you're I'm in the middle of this and i said okay i'll show you so the next show in between it was two shows that day i'm talking to joe coy and we talked about it then it ended up being a blow up and i go you know what i'm gonna go zero energy out there i'm not gonna give them the extra oh. so i gave them a full warm-up boom but when that show started i go you're gonna like you know say i'm just like go out there and warm up like we had a you know that's what how it ended with michael cox and, and so and i said okay i'll show you yeah warmed them up and i just shut down like energy wise and the show tanked it was whitney was on it and ben glebe i felt bad but i go i had to kind of take a stand Oh. And that, that shows you like how important 
energy is and that's energy all. It, energy and it, yeah and energy it, is 100 percent of it i think yeah and all i was looking real quick with my is just like i never complain one time you know just let, that's all i did i didn't yeah. ask i was just like telling him and then it, it bothered me you know as a baseball player or as a guy or a guy who's done warm-up for all those years it kind of bothered me and that's why i shut down and then it led i ended up quitting yes my question to you is that why do you look like a hairy hawk what? I am hairy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. my nose. My nose is kind of hook hookish. I know it is. I, I've accepted that in my life. It's getting droopier as I become older. I was just asking a question. I, I, I want to know why. Here's the deal. I don't mind being hairy. I'm yeah. getting hair, extra hair on my shoulders recently. <laughs> extra? Wait, wait, wait. wait who gets extra? hair on their shoulders? This guy. I, I do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm taking supplements. I'm taking BioSil. <laughs> So that's why my beard is thick. Yeah. My eyebrows are growing in. The my nails, my teeth. I'm a believer in supplements. <laughs> oh, you are. Is it just biotin? It's it, it has bio, but it's biosil. It has something else in mm. it that uh, it helps with uh, your skin elasticity, collagen. Yeah. But here's the thing: I take it. I could feel my nails getting strong. It's something you could feel. Mm. So, no. Yeah, that's you, why. Wait, you take it and you go, "Oh my god, I have Wolverine." Like Wolverine, nails. yeah. Yes. Whoa. They get thick. It feels like wow. These are they don't feel brittle. <laughs> no, you know you, you can have feel yeah, like you have yeah, brittle yeah, nails. Yeah, yeah. This helps you not have brittle nails, and then it makes your hair coarse, thicker. And I'm telling you, it's growing on my shoulders, <laughs> and I'm okay with that because as you get, I think it's coming back in shoulder. Hair. <laughs> you think it is shoulder pad? I think yeah. women appreciate a man who's. Uh, who's at 50 they like it they like the gray hair they like mm -hmm. the shoulder yeah. hair yeah. right right so I'm, i can where, corroborate you can yes i think that salt and pepper is probably the sexiest thing on a man oh thank you but it gets scraggly it's, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. hard to upkeep. right where do you have hair that you shouldn't have hair do you think where i shouldn't yeah yeah um I, i'm okay you know it used to bother me having arm hair and yeah, all that yeah, i've yeah. had laser on my back knuckle hair used to bother me but i think as you get older you just don't care i mean i don't like having ear hair that's something i think we can all agree on. <laughs> i will yeah, maintain yeah. ear hair uh, i ocd about my eyebrows but i'm trying to just let everything grow out and relax and i think the you thick see, eyebrows are totally in. That's what I hear. Yeah. From where? You get, you get From where? Your eyebrows. I did when wax. I was Wait, younger. Armenia wow. Weekly. Where? Armenia uh, Weekly. What, what magazine Wait, are you like, reading this from? Your eyebrows are awful. His eyebrows are spectacular. <laughs> are, okay. well, I, I need to look, but they're getting gray, and I'll pluck a gray hair, and it messes up the shape. But so. you have Brooke Shields <laughs> eyebrows. Yes. Very. Thick. Oh, he does mess up. Yeah. But I'm accepting that. You Every know? once in a while, I'll look at your eyebrows and go, "Man, that's misshapen." That's, is that why? Because you, oh, you see, don't give me OCD, Bobby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, scare yeah. Him, well, that's no, sometimes you know, idle time is a devil's playground. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> like you have a lot of free time, and I feel that that's why. Write that down. Write that down. Well, that's yeah. Write that down. That's that's one of our things. Idle structure time is, is a important. Devil's yeah, yeah, yeah. And structure is important. There's so many times I would be, you know obsessive about myself and then i would go to warm up and nobody would talk about it that's why having a regular job a regular place because you're not at home with all this free time and have your thoughts go where they go that's why periscope because i just get on it and i kind of it's like a check-in almost i'll do the live stream yeah you do a lot I of that i love your periscope oh thank yeah, you i've you seen do. you play the drums in your car i've seen you do everything <laughs> well yeah i'm just doing things i would normally do i yeah. mean i would exercise for an hour and i'm on a swiss ball i'm drumming so why not just show it on periscope mm. or i'm driving to the comedy store they like to see you know behind they like to see the process and then just walking to starbucks i do that but it, it's good it's a good it's not podcasting yeah but it's a uh it's a muscle are you armenian what are you born jewish raised gemini um, I am an Eastern European mutt. I need yeah. to do a DNA test. You my definitely sister do. Had, you definitely my do. sister and mom did it. We have a kit here. I'll give you Are you, you serious? Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, just do a cotton swab, right? Mm -hmm. they just... You just spit in it, but your mouth you can't have eaten in the last 30 minutes, I think. Okay. <laughs> what did you eat in the last 30 minutes? Yeah, yeah. What I went to El Pollo Loco. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's then fine. I, went, I went to Starbucks. I had a free uh, meal at Starbucks. How do you get a free meal there? You know they 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 keep track of points. All oh, right, you know, it's in the yeah, yeah, rewards. It's in the app. It's I got a lot of yeah, rewards. Yeah, 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 you got a lot of rewards. Um, yeah. So you're Eastern European Jew. Yeah. Yes, I am Russian, Polish. Yeah, you German. have that vibe. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And I never, yeah, I didn't really. Uh, I wasn't bar mitzvahed. I wasn't raised. I was raised here in the San Fernando Valley, Los Angeles. And yeah, I want to get into that, but I, I also yeah. want to. Do you remember how we met, you and I, or no? 
Um, I know early on, I'm going to say in 2000, I met you, you saw me, or my friend Adam Grotman was a comedian I did oh shows with. Adam we Grotman. Just, oh my oh God, my it's so God. fucking what? funny because we just talked about Adam no, Grotman. We didn't just talk about him, we watched all his videos on, today. on oh. YouTube. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah Connection. Yeah. So Adam, <laughs> I knew Adam through open mics, or he ran his own show at the Cafe 101 yeah. in the Dean Del Rey booth. Um, <laughs> Dean loves yeah, Cafe yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then Adam, I believe you lived in the same building mm -hmm. with Adam. So that's right. Adam said he used to come over to my house and goes, "Hey, I did this show last night. I killed." Okay. And I, he goes, "You want to listen to it?" And obviously, you go, "No." Yeah. But you would hear. I would hear it anyway. Yeah. And it would just be silence. So like George. <laughs> yeah, like George, George style. George, George Kimmel style. style. It would be <laughs> silence, and he'd go, "I killed." And it used to boggle my mind. Like my eyes used to vibrate because I couldn't believe like, he's hey, hearing laughs when they're yeah. There. You know guys like <laughs> do you know guys like that that like oh I just killed <laughs> but they didn't. I've I've witnessed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah. are that is a that it's is a phenomenon. That is a phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there really is because some guys are just unaware of it. They're they have bad ears. Happier. <laughs> yeah. You think they're happier? Yeah, ignorance. Ign deafness is bliss. Yeah, but here's the thing though. Why I'll, I'll tell you why they're not happy is they. They go, I'm killing, but where am I, why am I here in my career, right? So with me, it's like I have the opposite. I think that's better to have, where I did good, but I still thought I did, it wasn't good. Right. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, you're hard on yourself. I'm hard on myself. I'm hard on myself also. Yeah, that's why I like you. Oh, well, thanks. I, I, I just need kind of like after a show, like one or two people that I know, like, you did good. Feel good about it. And then I move on. I, it wouldn't be something like all night we talk about my set. It would be like you talk for a minute. Good job. Thank you. Move on. Like, I do need... It's just like sometimes, with, like when you're working, you work with a girl that, you know, you see her or you, you look good. Thank you. Boom. Then you feel good for the rest <laughs> of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. you're by yourself, sometimes you need a, you, a little validation or just a little acknowledgement. That's all. And yeah. I, sometimes after my, I mean, after my sets, I'll go up to the door guy or one at the comedy store Laugh Factory. It's kind of a running joke. How do I do? You know, just once and then I move on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we get into our heads. Like when we're alone, we start thinking about, well, you know, just your just mind just, you know, goes crazy, and then you start, you know, Ruminates. getting depressed. Yeah, every once in a while, as comics, I think we do need a little bit of a validation, you know. Well, almost every day. Yeah. But you got it. You honestly, you do have to think positive. You have to. I learned at playing baseball. I mean, I've always been a nice guy. Uh -huh. But I was like almost taken advantage of for being nice. It was like to laugh and smile. I got ridiculed. Oh, eh, smiley guy, gay boy. Some, they like thought it was not normal to yeah. be happy and be supportive. Mm -hmm. So that was always something that uh, you know bothered me. But I see later on that. It it keeps me. Uh, it works. I yeah. mean, during the warm up, in my my demeanor seems to be people like being around it. Yeah, being positive. I mean, you are beloved. I, and I, I heard I, I'll, that. I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll, connect, I'll tell you why. Because I'm I don't harm people. No, no, no but steal. I don't steal. No, no, it's not that. It's not that. It's just that. Like when you're you uh, you take medication, correct? Very little. But you, there was a time where you didn't, where you got off of it. Well, I'll, well, I went. I'm not accusing you of anything. Don't. It's, it's not. You're not in trouble. I'm just asking you a question. Yeah, I went off at cold turkey, but not by choice. It yeah. was. Uh, it ha I got sick, and I could tell you about it. But yeah, yeah I yeah. went. I you're not anybody going off their meds cold turkey. It's a recipe for disaster. I was I was um, put in a fifty one fifty hold when I got off my meds cold turkey. There you go. It and happens. I consider myself like a reasonably like sane person, but I got off my meds cold turkey. And I went absolutely nuts. Mm. Yeah, it's almost like somebody going on a bender, drinking and turning into somebody else. There's not that stigma of somebody who drinks and gets into a crazy fight and blacks out. But if you go off your meds and right. you yell at uh, the barista at Starbucks, all of a sudden <laughs> you got to be thrown into the hospital. Yeah. They don't know how to handle that. But yeah. what I learned with medication, however you stand on it, it's powerful. And if you're not, uh, you know, you're not aware of taking them, that, that's the hard thing is getting off them. If there yeah. is a plan for you to get off, that's the hard part. It's like so you're, it's a merry it slowly. Yeah, it's a merry-go-round. It's a weird thing too with some meds. Like I think it was um, Celexa or one of those earlier generation yep. SSRIs. I know about that. 
where you would get some weird like flashes. Zaps. Yeah, like zaps. And I had that for years. Ouch. I and never it, got those, thank gosh. Yeah, Selexa, <laughs> which is, uh, <laughs> I was on Selexa mm -hmm. and it. Uh, <laughs> you said gosh. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> you don't say God? Not really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of like, yeah, I, I won't. I mean, I say, I'll say God. Yeah, what did I say, gosh? Yeah, yeah. Gosh, yeah. Oh, well, you know, I'm a wholesome guy. <laughs> <laughs> but Selexa turned into Lexapro. Yeah. Yes, Lexapro Lex is a little better. It has a... Less sexual side effects. Well, yeah, the, the, the side effect profile is a little bit better than Selexa, I think. And I think there's no... I mean, for me, the shame in it that, you know, with the internet and emails and social media, and for me, it was like doing comedy. It was... Uh, it was painful. I would, when I began doing open mics up in Seattle, was like I people would laugh, but I'd be upset. It was like, oh, it's funny when you get mad or stressed out. And it's like, okay, it's funny, but yeah. it doesn't feel good. So how can I still be myself, still be funny, but actually not physically feel bad? Like yeah. my heart rate and frustrations. Yeah. So I think having that when I first be, and also just thinking too, that getting, it was just a combination of like being alone, looking in the mirror, I'm out of college. Mm -hmm. So I needed a buffer and I started, that's when I took that Luvox up in Seattle. They gave mm -hmm. me a buffer. I didn't smoke pot or anything like mm -hmm. that. And you know what? It actually like helped my comedy. I hate to say it if you want to say it was a shortcut or a cheat, but no. I took it and I felt like I could do my comedy and not have the physical you know, attributes of stress, of getting worked right. up. Well, I mean, I take, you know, when I'm acting, I take beta blockers. Oh, yeah, yeah, pro, pro Yeah, and, pro it, panel, and, it, yeah. And, it, and it helps me. Takes away the physical It takes away the stress. physical, like when I'm stressed out, it comes out in my body in weird ways Sweat. where people perceive it as like I, I'm nervous. But it's not necessarily that, right? It's just that my body reacts when it comes to like high pressure, it's adrenaline, adrenaline, yeah. adrenaline rushing experiences. So I shake a little bit and stuff yeah. like that, and I just didn't. And then every time I would do it, you know, I would think about it. It would only, almost add on to it. It's you know, a snowball effect. Snowball when you, effect. When you know that people are perceiving you the way you don't want to be perceived, mm -hmm. which is shaking and nervous, then it just becomes even like a bigger burden in your mind. Right. Does that happen when you're doing stand up? No. See, okay, doesn't on stand up. Yeah, you wouldn't yeah. need a beta blocker for stand up. I mean, I've taken them for stand up, but um. I can do it without it. But acting is more of a challenge because you're... But can I just say this? Yes. When I am on beta blockers and I'm doing stand-up, I kill more. Oh, really? Mm. I can feel my pacing different. I can feel myself going, all right, just sink into this bit a bit. Whereas when I'm not, I rush into everything. Right. I have been on the beta blocker and... I haven't been ta I haven't been on it for like oh, almost a year. I don't like how it feels. I, I like, don't either. I like how I feel now. I like how my I don't feel bad. I don't feel chemically. I don't mm. know the beta blocker or Same. like uh, let's say clonopin. Yeah, clonopin. These yeah. things condole you, and for me, I feel like clonopin makes me a little slow. That's exactly. I was uh. on beta blockers for two years. I was on a tenolol every day, mm -hmm. and I couldn't formulate sentences to save my life because right. I would just drop my blood pressure, yes. and I never felt like my brain was being perfused. And I, I told Bobby, I, I don't know how he. I like it. I hate the way it makes me feel. It makes me feel absolutely stupid. But here's what you do. What you learn that okay, cut back on the caffeine. Cut back on the Red Bull. Do breathing. Go for a walk. Mm -hmm. There, All there right. are natural <laughs> alternatives. All right, hippie dick. No, I mean, uh, but I've seen <laughs> hippie mean, dick. Jesus Christ. What no, but I'll go for a now? walk if I have time before my comedy <laughs> store set. I'll go for a walk, like a thirty minute okay. walk. Okay. You so you don't believe in that stuff. You don't believe in I'm breathing. Kidding. I love visual, it. He loves his Red Bull. In visual, yeah, but it can make you edgy. You have to find that right, like I, you have to find that uh, something that opens you up without making the, a stimulant. Yeah. I feel like when I'm nervous and I'm on that caffeine, I can't think. I get block. But so what happened yes. that day at Starbucks? Here I mean, we I heard, go. What happened to the day? To I want to get into <laughs> it, all right? Because I, now we're getting into fucking like intricacies of like medication. Well, that, that's where the show was going. I was telling you. I, know, I understand that, but what, I'm, uh, what I want to know is what okay, happened tell the you day at Starbucks? Okay, let me. Was Starbucks? Something yeah. happened. Okay, here we go. All right. Okay, here we go. I'm sorry for yelling, but <laughs> here we, we go. go. All right. 
everything was going great here in America. <laughs> and um, I'm doing well. I'm happy. My HBO pilot got picked up. They said, we're going to oh. let you do five. We're going to do five, uh, what is 15 minute episodes? Yeah. That's what it was. And so I was just kind of staying in the zone and people were saying, you should be excited. Go take a victory lap. Why aren't you excited about this? And it was like, I kind of didn't believe it. I was just staying in my zone. So I was going to Europe and I was on, I think, 20, because getting off the med is hard to do. And I was on the 20 milligrams of Lexapro. Mm -hmm. Then I was going to Europe and they're saying, take a victory lap, have fun. I go, you know what? I am going to have fun. I, maybe I will have a beer. So I looked up and they said, well, you know what? I've gone on trips. If I, or I want to take a beer, I'll take a Lex, cut it down. So I went down to 10, 10 milligrams when I went to Dublin. Good shows, feeling good, drank a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then I went straight from Dublin, six days there, to Montreal Comedy Festival. Something happened. I got sick. I had a reaction to a side of to getting off the meds. I don't know. I went. I had. I picked up strep throat in Montreal at the comedy festival, Oof. and I went downstairs. And the 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 doctor for the festival says, "You have strep throat. Here's a Z pack. I could even swallow. My yeah. I was. Uh, I, I had to cancel shows. Gave me a Z pack. I felt better. I go wow. I do feel better. He says you'll feel better in 24 hours. I felt better, and my mind was clear. And I said, you know what? I feel good. I'll just stay on this so i stayed on the z pack and my mind was clear my shows were good and i was like having a great time and then when i came back to la a couple days later people would see me and go well are you on cocaine what's with you and it was like no i'm just happy they told me to take a victory lap i'm feeling good <laughs> but they weren't used to see i feel me being confident and part of that was okay yeah i cut down on the meds right. and you do that and you I was hitting all the check marks for having a manic episode. Right. So that kind of like set me off a little bit. And then they sent over, they didn't like how some of my tweets or how I was talking, like this doesn't seem right. Mm -hmm. Then they sent over the police mm. the, uh -huh. to my house, like a wellness check. And Who's they? Hollywood. Mm. Zach. Uh, he, I mean, I'm not saying Zach, but I'm saying there was other people Because I know that Zach Galifianakis I mean, you might have been... You he, may, let me just say this, all right? Oh, go so ahead. Stop, stop. Yes, Bobby. He, he, he loves you. Great guy. No, it's not even that. I know Zach. Yes. He loves you like you're a part of him, like a, like a limb. Oh, wow. All right? There really is. He's... People are just... People are upset. get obsessed with Brody because he is such an original kind of an entity in comedy. And when com com comedians are great and they see greatness, they latch on. And he's also a nice guy, so there is a love there. So I'm not. When you say Hollywood, I know what you mean. Go on. <laughs> so <laughs> interruption. They. I remember they sent the cops over to my house. I was walk because I thought my they were going to meet me at Starbucks. Uh, excuse me, Subway. So I expected that. Why don't we go meet you? Oh, we'll meet you. They want to like meet me, see how I'm doing. My friends. I, yeah. I, I said I'll be at at Subway. They didn't show. I come back home. I see the the police. This is over in Valley Village, North mm -hmm. Hollywood. I yeah. see the police coming up to me, and they said, "Yeah." Um, we got a call from so and so. Uh, just Zach. wanna no, you didn't say Zach. Okay, we got a call. God, you get <laughs> Zach Galifianakis. Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> they uh, we got we got a call and and I go, I'm doing fine. He goes, Do you want to hurt anybody or yourself? I go, Why would I? Whoa. I'm happy. I just hosted TMZ, which I did. <laughs> Shout out to TMZ. And yeah. uh, I said, I'm happy. I said, I, I would. I go, I was in the Hangover because I played a cop. I go, I played a cop. I'm a good guy. <laughs> And then this one cop, it was an African-American cop and then a, a white guy and the yeah. African, I was talking to an African-American guy Yeah. and he was cool. He like understood like, okay, you're cool, you're fine. But the other cop was kind of like the giving one. me bad energy. Right. And I'm very, because I was off my meds, I was very in tune with energies. <laughs> <laughs> so I, Hippie day, hippie the, day. Yeah. The cop, the, 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 the cop like liked me. This is all in a, within like a few minutes. And yeah. I said, can I talk, can I talk to him? And he says, yeah. And I go, I go, why are you giving me negative energy? <laughs> I go, I, I don't know if I said you don't like Jewish people. I might have said that. 
I go, you don't want, possibly, possibly. And I go, what is it? You don't want, uh, you don't want, uh, let's just say he said that. I'm not, or I said that. Yeah, but yeah, I may yeah. have. I go, what, what, I mean, you, you don't like Jewish people? Let me tell you what. <laughs> I go, I work out, I work out with kettlebells. Why don't you take your belt off and oh, meet me out back and fuck. I'll fight you? That's what I said. Why? Why did you escalate? Mania is a really. But fun I asked thing. the cop. I asked the cop. <laughs> oh, I you asked the black guy. Yeah. Can oh, I talk? Can I talk to him? Oh, yeah. in that way. Yeah, he was right there. He oh, was God. laughing. Oh, oh, he he oh, was oh. like, couldn't believe I was saying got that it, to got him. It. Yeah, yeah. The, the cop, like, uh, the cop, like, respected me. <laughs> yeah. All oh, right, right. The black right. cop yeah. was smiling. Yeah. The white guy kind of stepped back, like, I can't. I because I called him out. Yeah. I go, you're being negative. I go, you got. I go. I I go. I know the UFC guys. <laughs> I know, I were, and I told, <laughs> but I told them, I, told them I worked out with kettlebells. <laughs> so he, Specific. but honestly, he backed down, and the, 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 the he couldn't believe it. And the, the black cop was laughing. That's yeah. why. So <laughs> I was still like being funny and yeah. still in my own sure, world, and sure. I wasn't hearing voices, nothing mm, like that. But right. I was on edge if anybody was like giving me attitude mm -hmm. i would like jump on them right. oh. and uh so i had that but it's also like just leave me alone right. so i go to i go to the starbucks well, so is, he so what okay once you that say a, that yes did they just left you alone yes okay great. i went on twitter after that i go they just sent the cops to my house f that i mean i was in the middle of a tweet storm too <laughs> yeah 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 so Anyway, and guys, and go to sleep, this and that. So anyway, I get up the next day and yeah. I go to Starbucks on Coldwater and Ventura. <laughs> yeah. And I go in there and I'm wearing a Dodger shirt, LA Dodger shirt. And I walk in and I see a guy on his computer, like a scriptwriter guy. You knew him? No, I could just tell. You know, I could yeah, tell yeah. he was like a Hollywood guy. Like I was picking up negative Hollywood actor energy. I had problems at another <laughs> Starbucks, but that was just a dust up. <laughs> so, so this one, yeah. I go in and I'm wearing a Dodger cap. He has a Dodger hat on. Yeah. And I see him. I go, oh, you're a Dodger fan. I go, I'm have a Dodger shirt. And then he had like the same kind of shoes. I pointed at my shoes and he was like, had a thing in his ear and he yeah. said something like, I'm on the phone, like kind of rude a little bit. And right. I, go, I go, why are you being rude to me? I go, I'm being a nice guy. He goes, I I I'm on the phone. I go, this guy's being a jerk. I go, see this guy right here? Oh, yeah. He's a jerk. Okay. <laughs> Love it. He's oh. trying to make it go. Okay. I, he's just trying to make it or something I understand. Like that. I understand. I love kettlebell. But he's, he's also just a guy. Just He's, trying, you know, he doesn't want to talk to you. I get it. And right. I, w I was in positive mania. Okay. And I did see the connections. Look, looking back, of course, I was, I mean, definitely like learned from that. But I was so amped up and wired. Mm -hmm. And you know what? He was an a-hole. That's yeah, the way was. I, I probably I, was. Yeah, and when also you're, like when you're manic, I yeah. I absolutely feel invincible. Exactly. Like nothing I say will yeah. have consequences. Nothing I do will have consequences. Yes. I'm just gonna call people out. I'm gonna travel, spend, just be wild about it. That's what was happening That's to insane. me. Yeah. But I was getting laughs. People liked it, and they didn't oh. know like, is this real? Is this not? Mm -hmm. Right. And it was real. But, and I didn't want to hurt myself and I didn't want to hurt anybody else, but I was on edge. That's all. It was just like my mind was, there wasn't that, you just, anything will set you off, but not to the point where I wanted to like attack strangers right. unless they gave me attitude. But these guys are, I was in Hollywood here. I don't know. It was just something picking up on these actor guys giving me attitude <laughs> because I was booking stuff at that point. Yeah. So I had this uh. like, confidence oh i did the hangover i hosted tmz <laughs> so i had a little bit of that going yeah. so that that's what happened and then i they ended up i mentioned a gun on t twitter you know but i never had a gun i never even thought about it, it was what was, it, was, it, what tweet, was the tweet do you remember yeah. leave me alone i've got a gun and i said <laughs> Right, Somebody right. said I had a gun in my mouth. I never oh. did. I never yeah. did. I mean, I'm not a gun guy, but I think I said that because I was getting phone calls. These people cared. I'm not saying they didn't right, care. Right. They yeah. did care. But I was letting them know, I'm good. I'm happy. And they're like, I don't want you seeing you this way. I go, I'm fine. Just, I'm creating stuff. Were you the only one who knew that, did anyone else know that you were tapering on your meds? Um, Maybe, maybe not. I don't think so. But I was like off them because I was mm -hmm. sick. I was on that Z pack from yeah. Canada, but I would. But I, the thing was, I was having good sets. I was thinking like, okay, I'm still able to get laughs right. on stage. I went down and I. I mean, I hosted TMZ. I went to the 
angel game. I did stuff, but uh, I was, I was being a little combative. New rule. Just don't bring up the TMZ again. I love that credit, game. though. It's oh, a great okay. credit, but, you Well, know. you know, but that's pressure. I did it. <laughs> so, anyway, that just led to um, my friends setting up some kind of intervention where, yeah, the police were brought in. And I felt, yeah, and they put me into the... I went to the hospital, like you were saying. I went to the hospital... And I, I probably needed some kind of rehab. I could have been sent off to an island in Hawaii. Yeah. And I have some issues with how that was handled. But uh, what, what, what place were you in? UCLA. I mean, they sent, mm -hmm. yeah, UCLA Medical Center. I was there how long were you there for? 17 days. Oh, my God. I mean, I couldn't believe it. I was there. First, you know, you're there for 72 hours or whatever. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. I because go, why am you. I? I told them, I said, I, I made a mistake on my meds. I'm fine. I know what I did. Yeah. Uh, no, sir, you better sit and go in your room. I go, yeah. I'm fine. I'm, I'm just, I had a show last night. Sit in your room or we're going to give you a shot. It's like, unbelievable. The they're, guys are like coming after me. They were trying, threatening you with a booty juice. Yeah. Is that what they call it? <laughs> booty juice, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I go, why are you doing this to me? And they're like, you know, they treat you like a number. They don't treat you like you're... Brody Stevens. Yeah. Or, yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. a guy who got railroaded. No, but... So that they made it worse. They're putting me like in this intensive unit. Then they ended yeah. up putting oh. me in a, another and unit. And everything is contraband too. So you don't have your belongings on you. You have they no take, phone. Nothing. Nothing. They take away your shoelaces. Mm -hmm. Your th and it's like for me, I didn't need that. I never ever had that thought of like hurting myself or hurting others. But you know what? They put me in there, and was it embarrassing? Yeah, but I was already tweeting about it. People knew about it. So oh, I, I felt like the whole comedy world knew about it then. Oh, but, I, I guess mean, so. we but we would get leaks. Like here's what I remember: WikiLeaks. Brody had a gun. Never did. I know he didn't. Now I know. Thank you. Up until this moment, though, you always thought I had. I was. One. Th I thought you had a gun. No, that he was at Starbucks. He yes, was sir. threatening people with a gun. Oh, that, I went to oh. that. I, know, I but, brought the gun to Starbucks. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, but that was what was circulating, you know, yeah, on the streets. Telephone is a dangerous game. Oh, okay. Right. So. No, never had it. Wow. Yeah. So. That's incredible. That's, yeah. That's silly. I feel like it was, I made a mistake or, and I, I was naive and it wasn't something that was building up. I mean, mm -hmm. I kind of played that up on the TV show, like, oh, it was building up. But I feel that, you know, I made a mistake. So. I think with meds is yeah you got to be careful going and off them and it, I think that happens to anybody who takes meds especially if it's if if it, the med is new and if it's your first time with it yeah. you don't know how it interacts with, with when you drink if there's so many things that you have to consider but I'll yeah I'll, and I'll tell you what they they when you go in there they literally put you on a chemical straitjacket they put me yeah. on Depakote and Seroquel Depakote is so hardcore what does that do what is it and it's really hard on your liver too get you, yeah you have to take these liver blood uh, samples yeah. you get you gain weight my hair I yeah. had a skin thing and I said and it was I was crying it's all like the time anti psychotic I go, whoa yeah I go I don't need this stuff this mm -hmm. is like I'm not into it. Now, was I getting laughs? Of course I was. <laughs> <laughs> but I Obviously. knew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, the the, the yeah. I didn't I need was it. on Zyprexa, and I put on 20 pounds in three weeks. Exactly, yeah. I put on weight, and I said, I don't like this. I moved back to the valley. Excuse me, moved back, and you have to be your own advocate. And mm -hmm. I just started walking more and tapering on, with the help of a, a doctor right. yeah. to get to the point where... I am I am now, which is limited. I take ten. I do take ten milligrams of Lexapro, and I take two hundred milligrams of Lamictal. That's what Doctor Drew Lamictal. told me to do. Oh wow! That's actually like what they say. Actually, when you t if you do take a Lexapro or a Celexa or a Prozac, you should have a anti. Is it called anti mm -hmm. underneath it? Yeah. As a safety net. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, my goal is to not be on meds. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't want, but you know what? If it's not broken, don't fix it. But I, I mm. like it. I'm on a little bit, but I'm focusing on breathing and diet, apple cider vinegar, supplements, walking, and being <laughs> positive. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I've, and thinking thin, thinking, your mind can, people think, oh, Brody, you're so lean. I, I think lean <laughs> what actually actualize yeah. it. right you a you actualize it yeah i mean honestly like in the shower i mean that's i thought about my show i mean everyone has thoughts in the showers yeah. but you could actually use that shower time as meditation i thought about my 
HBO show in the shower. I thought about a lot of my comedy bits in the shower. Yeah. I thought about uh, just tons of stuff in there and meditate, breathing and... I just think, I mean, I played baseball too, and I can remember all the times of me being nervous on the mound. And so it's just finding that balance. Right. How old are you now? 48 and a half. Wow. We're, we're no, great. no, I'm sorry. I'll be 48 in May. I'm 47. Oh, you're 47 now. You're the dog. Yeah. We're like I am a year apart. You're, you're, we're a year apart. Yeah, I'm 40. I'll be 48. I'm okay with it. Um, I feel good. And I, I, I just want to say, can I have do a little testimony? Sure. Is that you know? It's so funny because since that thing that happened years ago at the start, whatever, what happened, whatever happened to you, yeah. I literally like I see you, and it's it just like it's you're one hundred percent you and healthy and well, thank and you, positive and like there's no. It's such a shock though, even because if you think about that, you know that rumor that happened, and then you look at Brody today, you're just kind of going that did that happen. But I feel like that was a really unfair rumor. Yeah, it was unfair. And I feel um, like yeah. if, you know, as friends always, you should be clear with your facts, especially if it pertains to somebody in a precarious, mm -hmm. like, you know, it, it, you should be clear about it. And I, yeah, I didn't know my, that was a new one for me. I didn't know the... I know, I know, I know that you're also. <laughs> he's processing it right now. I know that you're also losing weight, and you and you do all these things like meditation and positive thoughts. Just, it's just basic fundamentals but that I learned in college. This, how come you don't have any lips? <laughs> oh, this guy's a personal attack. He made fun of my nose, the hair, and the lips. I know I don't have big lips, but I could, I could purse them out. Proust them out? Was it? <laughs> yeah, 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 there we go. There it is. There, there I can, I can yeah. have lips. Like a I know. <laughs> it's good. It's good. No, I, I've embraced. I've embraced yeah. who I am. Uh, it's a joke, Brody. I'm we're, okay we're, with we're, it. It didn't hurt me. Little, uh, it, it didn't hurt, hurt me. You. It didn't hurt you at all, but right? The nose jokes growing up bothered me. <laughs> oh, you had people make fun oh, of. Oh yeah. Where'd you grow up? In Reseda, San Reseda, Fernando that's Valley, right, Tarzana sir. Elementary, Reseda High School. So you were bullied. I think so. Yeah. For being a nice guy. Yeah, but were you tall or were you just a skinny guy? Gangly, kid? tilted pelvis. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> you know, I walked weird. I, oh, I right, think people right. thought like, oh, you know, smiling. Boy. I was uh, gay, but I wasn't yeah. gay. I was into girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah But yeah. I would get, it's like, you're gay, you're gay. It's like, uh, am I? I don't know. It's like, and that's <clears throat> growing up in a you know apartment divorced parents i could see looking back on it, i can see why people have certain you know having a father around or having a, a brother or having structure i don't know i just felt like i was not thrown to the wolves but mm -hmm. i went to public school mm -hmm. i was bust i drove a pinto i talk <laughs> about these things today yeah and i feel that it uh, you know made me tougher somewhat too it's i'm honest i went through that but thank Thank God. So your father wasn't around then? <clears throat> my dad was around, but they were divorced. My dad was uh, always lived in the neighborhood kind of thing. They were cordial. But, but you had a relationship with him then? Yeah, he would go to all my baseball games. Oh, cool, and cool. I, I had a good relationship with my father. I feel that I could have been a maybe a better son, less selfish. I think a lot of kids go through that. But my father passed away. He was 63 oh, back in 97. So he's been gone for like over 20 years. But my mom is still around. My mom's 80, she'll be 87 in March. And I just really try to make, be a better son to my mom than I was son. To, I'd really put that effort into being a Is she better. still in Reseda? No, she lives in uh, Palm Desert. But would people call you gay? You mean you went to, you, you were a, a baseball, sta baseball standout? Yeah, I was a good pitcher. I was good. I mean, a lot of it was probably in my head and I was insecure and maybe, maybe it was part of being Jewish, not bar mitzvah. I don't know. Maybe if I went to Hebrew school, <laughs> I would be protected. I'd be I'd see other guys like, oh, there's another guy with no lips and uh, looks like a hawk. <laughs> My people. <laughs> you know, I was around like other divorced Jewish kids, Latinos, Persians, uh, blacks, and Aryans. No Asians then? No, we had, I had a, we had Asian friends. I had an Asian friend, Mike Kim, uh, Chong Korean. Kim. Yeah, we had Asian, yeah, Korean. Yeah, I, I don't have uh, any Asian. I'm friends with Yoshi, the the <laughs> legendary Yoshi. Yeah, you know Yoshi wants me dead, right? He does. Yeah. Yoshi's oh. mad at you. Oh my! God. I know that. I know there's a whole Asian underworld. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, he well. wants me dead. It's insane. It's insane. <laughs> 
He wants Dude, his parents he dead. He wants my too. parents dead. I mean, I, I don't want. We're not getting into it. Okay. <laughs> we're not, not. I don't want you to choose sides. Well, I don't want sides. Oh, you're not going to choose sides. I don't want even. What is this, KFC? <laughs> <laughs> but my. But yeah, so you know Yoshi. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't. I bet he's he's got some stories. Yeah, I know. He's yeah. So, I don't fuck with him. You know, I'm scared of the guy. Well, that's probably that's probably best. Yeah, I, you know, which I got a lot of porn from him back in the day too. That's what I was gonna go into. Is yeah, yeah. that not go I go into that with the line of questioning? Yeah. So yeah. that's what it was. No, 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 no. It was um, something that happened recently, but during the years he used to go, "Hey, come pick up." This bag, he has a black garbage bag full of porn. Yeah, and I used to go pick it up like three in the morning on like on the corner, it's like somewhere in North so Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, I would do that too and yeah. give it all to my baseball friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's always shitty porn, kind of. Uh, right? I like... mean, there are some good. Uh... <laughs> you really, uh, I, it's free was good for me. Yeah, free is good. You didn't like it. I mean, I mean, I guess in retrospect, because you know you have the internet and whatnot. And I, I have, I belong to like high def sites. I have memberships, right? But like so browsers. I could, Can I get your password? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have other ones. But my point is, is that and back then, that's fine. No, I'm not complaining. But he yeah. had a lot of European stuff. Yeah, like uh, yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm not European. I feel like European porn. It doesn't really do it for me. Yeah, because I, I feel like that that's what they do all. I, I feel like they're a little bit more open sexually. I yeah, like I like taboo. seeing porn taboo, from yeah. places where. It's not like it, the first scat porn that I saw where people were like were fucking with each other's like actual feces. Yeah. Oh, German. Yeah, German. Ooh. Yeah. I like, and I, it, Does that do? People are into that. I'm. People are really into that. I'm not. Yeah. Thank Who God. is? I don't know anybody either. Can I don't you find like that at Pornhub. You might be borderline because you love the smell of shit. Do you? Yeah. It's 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 <laughs> horrific. Basic, I makes a difference. I know. I like it's that. It's putrid. I understand what it is, Brody. I just <laughs> let me ask a question. Do you sm you like the smell of that? Do you s you smell your toilet paper after you wipe? Well, I'll, what I'll do is sometimes I'll wipe, <laughs> yeah. right? And I go, is it maybe it, it seemed dry? Uh huh. Right. So then I'll look at the toilet paper. No, just listen. Go ahead. And I go, it's not dry. <laughs> there it is. And I'll just go, and that's it. You, what, let me ask a question. <laughs> yeah, Mind blown. Let, yeah, let's say you have. Uh, you know, we all have like near accidents, and you have to like. Go I shit in. my pants all the time. But okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah, you know Ari talks about and is uh, scooping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scooping. Have you scooped? What's a scoop? It's not dry. You're okay. And it's there on the. T it's. Do you smell it then? Like that's oh, when it. Like that? that's. On my fingers. No, on the toilet paper. Yeah, I do that. Oh, you're into that. Yeah, he's I'm not in, into, he's it. into it. I just, <laughs> no, 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 yeah, no, 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 bro. You, you heard it here. No, Bobby's no, into I'm not it. In, TMZ no. reporter. Everyone back up. Everyone back up. Everyone back up. Everyone. Listen, friend. Um, I'm not into it. Like, it turns me on. I just do it. You know, there's a difference between doing it and how I feel about doing it. You know, when I'm doing it, I don't go, oh, this gives me pleasure. I just do it. You just do it. It's reflex. It's reflex, <laughs> exactly. It is some. It is putrid. I, I understand what it is, right? Shit is putrid. A lot of diseases. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, let's keep it positive. Well, you made it negative a little bit. You went, <laughs> Bobby, yeah. you went there. You took me down this rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. You'd be a hit in Germany. Yeah, I'd be a hit in Germany. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Yeah, you. I'll, I'll, I haven't. Go ahead. I want to really get into this though I'll with fall. you. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing anybody though? Because I never, I've never seen Brody Stevens with a girlfriend. Here's the thing. I'm attracted to women. I know you are. I'd like to have a girlfriend. I feel that the girls, women, females that I'm attracted to. Yeah. They probably aren't attracted to me. I'm not picking up that vibe back. And the ones who are, most of the time, I am not physically into it. Now, there are times, and as I've gotten more confident, more honed in my craft, yes, I would say the last three to five years, I, I have had quality, like, girl, oh, she's attractive. In fact, girls I've made out with. All right. But for me to follow up on it, I don't always do that. It could just be a procrastination thing. So you're asking me why I don't have it. Maybe I just don't have the 
the I can't I, I get stressed maybe I can't deal with the pre- I mean I've been around girls and like some they just some of them drive I'm me not nuts. accusing you of being gay I'm, well, I'm that's I'm, one of the way I took it <laughs> <laughs> girls yeah. females yeah, women yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I I'm just because in my head I'm like I honestly think that you're attractive I think so. that's what I'm hearing I, I, yeah, I, I think handsome. you look like a little bit of a little bit of an Eric Cantona thing oh the the soccer player yeah there's a the French soccer yeah, player yeah yeah. There was a French. What's his so- name? Eric, Eric Cantona. Cantona. I mean, not the nose. Excuse me, I'm not making fun of your nose, yeah. but there's just a European kind of a handsomeness about you that I like. Well, I pr- you I- have a great jawline. I have a look. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. You have beautiful eyes. I that I am aware of. You are. You have hair on your shoulders, but no, I know. I'm. I like. I'm getting. He yeah, does not look that, like Eric Cantona. That's not, <laughs> He's not putting me in a better mood. No, 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 no. Turn, turn, turn it around. Younger turn Eric Cantona. Con- yeah, put Cantona. younger Eric Cantona. Okay. Not when, he's 80 now. <laughs> sorry. You fucking son of a bitch. I'm sorry. You ever sabotage me like that again? I, I just want to fucking die. I love Eric All right, my bad. No, I, no, believe me. I think part of it is just me procrastinating. I think when I was younger, it was confidence. It was... I think it was hard for me to, I think if I had an older brother, to be honest with you, I don't want to get too deep on yeah. like childhood and yeah, yeah, yeah. things like that. But I would say that I think if I had an older brother, you know, they had big brothers okay, programs. Yeah. That's a European, yeah. Yeah, maybe when I was younger. Yeah. yeah. I'm just, I'm, it's, but I, I think early on, Bobby, yeah, it yeah. was confidence. And then it was like ruminating thoughts in my head, Jewish kid here, Dad not around, mother, sister, it stressed me out a little bit. You know, women can stress you out. Yes. I was around that. My mother, Stephen, Stephen, my sister, Stephen, it's like, drove me nuts. <laughs> I think that, po- I'm not putting it on them, and yeah, I've done yeah, that yeah. on other podcasts. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it had something to do with my confidence. I believe it. And I got into college. I was with girls. I had girls I hung out with, but it, I didn't, the ones I really liked, I didn't have a, didn't totally go for and i think as i've gotten older i think it's just maybe i've gotten procrastinated and that sort of thing but i do would like to have a relationship when i settle when will that be i don't know what does that mean have a special out on netflix no, <laughs> <laughs> no there is something to I, but, I, I, but i, I, I can yeah. i just say this yes i still have that thing I go, I'm going to have a family when I make it, right? And I talk to some people and they go, didn't you already make it? And you're like, I'm like, no. Because in my head, making it is a certain level. But in many ways, I have made it. And, and the question is, is there ever a settle? First of all, making it <clears throat> in America is probably buying property okay um able to retire (laughs) right those are things i think having a partner maybe a child possibly may i don't know if that's considered making it but i think career-wise getting in busting in i think you've busted in i think you busted in though so you've settled i thought yeah i've said yeah to an apartment in the valley but look at where I live. I live in a two-bedroom condo in Hollywood. This is a con. I don't want to get into you know finances. <laughs> but yeah, I'm driving yeah, yeah. my mom's car. You know, yeah. I don't have property. I don't have a Prius. I don't have a dog. I don't have a girlfriend. Those are things. I think also this is how, what is making it. I don't know. I think what is getting in. I mean, I'm past at the comedy store. I, I here's the thing. Yeah. I would just like. I I just need shelter and food. Yeah. I'm okay with who I am right, right now. I don't have like I'm not scared of stuff. Mm-hmm. Just I'm scared of being homeless. Mm-hmm. I don't have like I'm not a hypochondriac. Just give me shelter, and you can Venmo me I, Blue Apron <laughs> meals. Right, but what <laughs> I, what I'm saying to you is is that from the information that I know about you, okay, yeah. to me most Americans are in your place. I think you're better, far better off than a lot of people. And a lot of people that already have like a a wife and kids and, you know, and whatnot. You know, I think that surviving in L.A. is expensive. Mm -hmm. And that's why. But I think if you and I lived in Omaha, 
Mm-hmm. Let's just pick Omaha. Mm-hmm. Been there, College yeah, World yeah, Series. We, yeah, we'd be in a different. We'd buy a house. We'd be able to buy a house and whatnot. Yeah. You know what I mean? So my point is, is that what I would like to see you do is in the n- near future, hopefully, mm-hmm. is that you find somebody. You know, I think that's the thing but, that. Okay. Go, go ahead. Sorry, let me interject. I hate this idea that that is the end all be all of happiness is finding somebody. Why can't you just be a perfectly content? older single person because i feel like if we ever broke up i'd be okay living in solace with the friends that i have now the animals that i have now and i think that there's something really gratifying about that and i think that people live happy single lives don't i don't like the idea that if we don't find somebody it's just you know downhill for the rest of your life someone to hold your hand when you die dying you're, you'll be gone who cares dying alone's fine too yeah i think friends are important friends are important i i and i know comedians get a bad rap but i think comedians are really good people they have good hearts they've been there oh for i so i 100 percent believe that so many uh times for me and then also i think just uh for me i like the social media i like the live streaming i'm reaching out i'm talking to people and that's the thing like you were mentioning that you know people have families and maybe they're not happy and I know that sometimes people live through me. That's why I like mm-hmm. to show them the comedy store. I like to show them access to the baseball field that I have. And then also just letting them know my thoughts. I always like talk, you know, sometimes it's political, it's social, it's this. And uh, I do that. So it's, um, yeah, I would like to have a, a partner. I think I'd like to have. It's just, I think, we're with the internet, you go home. It's like, I've got pot at home, I've got my computer at home. Those probably are not... That's why I go out for a walk. Because mm-hmm. if I'm at home, I got the internet, and I can smoke pot. And if right. I have enough money saved up, I don't have to work. I'll mm-hmm. go do my spots at the store. So that's why I get out, and then I force myself to do the Periscope. And then... But you know, you got to... It's... Yeah, and when you're by yourself, you're accountable for yourself. That's mm-hmm. kind of when you have a partner, maybe they can, like push each other too you know compliment each other yeah yeah um well okay i mean yeah. you're fine okay <laughs> you're fine it was just a thought that i fucking had i think i had. I mean, I, I mean i mean like you know, I, I at first i feel like i i was fucking teamed up there <laughs> i was just you know maybe this is something and then okay maybe not then i don't know I, 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 I would like die yes. alone i don't give a fuck <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna die say alone that. i'm gonna be on bumble Oh, I'm gonna, you know, I should be, do those dating services. That's how we met. We met on Tinder. Oh, you did. I do. Let me say something right now. She's the best. Four, five years almost. Mm. This this podcast yeah. is her idea, and it it put me back on the map career wise. Okay, the shows that I'm on now, she helped me do. Yeah, podcasting's good. Yeah, she does. For, she's done a lot of things relation. that are like really like immensely you know positive in my life he's my buddy for life i want to see him succeed and i think that's why this probably works is beyond anything else i just want to see him thrive so that's what i'm saying is is that in many ways that ha- works too I, if you can find somebody that wants to see you thrive i agree it is hard in los angeles though yeah yes and i also feel i'm a late bloomer <laughs> and <laughs> I, love the I think Yes, I would like to do that. But my only stress, if you ever ask me, like, what were you depressed or you think about? It? I think it's just money, couple, the survival. I don't want to be homeless. I don't right. want to get to that point. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i I'm, I'm sorry. Can I, I just look at, you know, you've been in a bunch of movies. I But I didn't save my money properly. Yeah. Probably I, I didn't invest it like I should. Because when, yeah, I'm, I'm in movies, but I'm not getting huge money on right, that. Right, right, I worked right. on The Hangover for two days. I was on due date for two days. You know, I get a cut of it or whatever right, it right, is. Right, 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 right. Um, I also feel that I put everything, I mean, I'm doing warm-up. I did, it's, it was cable warm-up. So it wasn't network mm-hmm. warm-up. So right. this is cable warm-up bit parts movies here and there yeah so it looks good but it's not that network right pension thing so when yeah you, and that's so why I mean, that means to me like i'm not i don't have the pension i'm not yeah. into that yet yeah but that that's when people go well why do you want to because i'm on a sitcom and they go why it's not you know you're doing great because it's that a thought that these kind of gigs I, lo- I would rather do Tiger Belly my whole life. I'd rather do stand-up, you know, and that, but it's like, 
that's if like if this show stays on, then it's gonna give me that comfortability, security. you know, security. That's all. Do you think that comfortability sometimes at your art is atrophies because of it? Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, when I was doing warm up, it was I put in all my energy. You could, you can't be late to a warm up gig. And I would have to be over on the west side for Fox or Chelsea, usually like by, say, 2 o'clock, 1.30, 2 o'clock. So I couldn't audition before. I couldn't mm -hmm. audition in the morning. I, I had to have a routine. Like, I'm leaving my house every day at, you know, this noon. Time, right. So I couldn't do any auditioning. So then I would do the show, and um, I'm on the mic, doing crowd work, meeting all my friends, being around industry types. And then you're putting out all this crazy energy and you're done. It's like, okay, I go eat and then maybe I'll go buy myself a shirt at Sports Chalet. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just got to kind of listen to your body a yeah. little bit, what you want. Is that where you dress? I mean, that's where you're, is that your favorite shopping place? I was, I would go there quite a bit. The one over on uh, Olympic and yeah, yeah, over yeah. by Chelsea, I'd go there. Yeah. And the other thing was, <laughs> because I'm from here, I grew up in the Valley. So yeah. I have personal life stuff that happens in Southern California. And then also my friend was a baseball coach for the Dodgers for four years. So every day after Chelsea, when the Dodgers were in town, I'd go to Dodger Stadium. I get to hang out and go on the field. So wow. I've done a lot of baseball stuff that now I work on a, I'm getting to do some more sports related work. But I have put a lot of investment into yeah, baseball, taking advantage of that, which may have taken away from some of my stand-up. You know, I'm spread thin. It's, am I doing baseball? Am I doing stand-up? Right. Am I doing uh, audience warm-up? Am I doing, what are you doing? So you're kind of like all over the place, which is, you know, good, but is it smart? You're just, you're doing what you, you're doing. How do you feel about Matt Kemp coming back? Oh, to the Dodgers? Mm -hmm. Well, I think they're going to probably trade him or he's gonna it's only gonna be temporary you think yeah that's the idea he, he doesn't even know matt kemp with the dodgers he's I lost know. a lot I know of weight he is. <laughs> and he played on the padres too yeah, I know. at one don't, point don't from san diego <laughs> and now he's was with the braves i think they're just gonna try and dump his salary i agree he, with you i think they're gonna dump his salary you know about him. that stuff yeah man is puig out puig was, no puig is the end. did you know that i did uh clayton kershaw's uh 30th well, birthday yeah, party clayton's a good Wait, dude. hang on one second <laughs> really yeah <gasps> This is a big deal. I know. I was there. Do you know who knows. Clayton Kershaw is? Yeah, Clayton's great. He's the best pi pitcher, pitcher in the league. and uh, double hitter. Double hitter all day. All day, every day. Cy Young winner, yeah, baby. Cy Young and MVP. And Samsung. Wow. So, yeah, he. Uh, I know him, become friends with him, mm -hmm. and he had a 30th birthday party, a surprise party. So his wife, I got in contact with her. She got in contact with me, and... I went out to Dallas this was a few weeks ago. They flew me out there in a, oh my in a restaurant. I came Damn. in and surprised him. Him and his, mostly it's just friends and family, like 30 people. Oh, so I did that. Yeah. So that was kind of fun. My, and, I just bought my mom a Kershaw jersey because that's her favorite, favorite of all time. Oh, yeah. How lucky. So I've done, I've done a lot of cool baseball gigs. That's and, amazing. Yeah. And I was around the Cubs when they won the World Series. I was around the Yankees. And that's what I try to share with comedy or even on Twitter or when I was doing warm up, just being around successful, seeing what it was, seeing a winning attitude. And when you have a winning attitude, like with the Yankees, yes, it was cor corporate. They almost, George Steinbrenner, the owner, he like <laughs> expected you to win. But within those parameters, you could do whatever you want porn, <laughs> go out. This is before cell phones. Yeah, it was yeah. like crazy. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? You show up on time and you're professional and you win. So the Yankees, I mean, for 12 years, they owned Manhattan. It right. was like all, because they won. And you could act crazy. So there, I, I feel like that you, you, it's about winning will allow you to do that fun stuff. Right. So I just saw it. I was around it. And I tried. And then when I went to be, doing Best Damn Sports Show, when I had all these football teams and high schools in the audience, I was really able to use them like as a as a example, like how to work with groups and learned about sitting up and laughing and just mm. putting out this energy. Because when they didn't put it out, a light would go off or they'd mess up on the teleprompter and things would just drag. Mm. So wow. I learned how to. It's a it's a real it technique. And, That's and a talent. It's a real talent to do that, dude. Yeah, well, thanks. You got it, but you have to jump into it. It's like it's like 
yeah, I didn't do it. It took me a while to get there, but I almost say it's like pouring milk. You just got to pour it in that cereal. You got to like go for it. Yeah. You really Write have to down. go for it. <laughs> just pour it in the cereal. It's so funny because when you're on stage, like doing regular stand up, mm -hmm. I could see some of that training in your stand up. Yeah. You're able to like, you know, take a dead room and get them to get, you know, rev them up. Yeah, I could I could feel the energy. And but that was a thing like it was okay, am I a warm up or a stand up? And I would say the last 2 years when I stopped doing it, kind of I was just kind of grew out of it to be honest. And when you're going to different shows, different stage managers, it it's frustrating. And then these paid audiences and they're talking back and it's Right, yeah, yeah. hasn't been fun. So the last couple of years I've really made a concerted effort to say I'm a stand-up. So when that comedy store lineup comes out over Twitter, I retweet it. I show a mic because I want to say, I'm a comedian. I'm at the comedy store. I'm not just some Let me ask you, because you've been at the comedy store as long, a very long time. Well, you got me in. Thank you. Were, you. That's, that's, that's all Thank I you. wanted you to say. <laughs> Good night, everybody. This whole <laughs> fucking podcast. That's why we brought you. <laughs> You, yeah. you got me in. There the we go. Store. Just say it again. I mean, Bobby Lee I mean, got me in oh yeah. at the comedy store. You yeah. recommended. I recommended me to you Mitzi. to Mitzi. You really did. I know I did. Drew Brotman. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you see, you were around when the comedy store was really bad. Yeah, I was kind of like, that was my first impression of the comedy store. This place is dark, it's scary and, and, and intimidating, and, and the room is hard to do. Yeah, and now, do you like the rebirth of it? I mean... Oh, yeah, I mean, of course, everyone likes the rebirth other than, you know, you know, too popular. But yes, it's a good vibe there, great, great opportunities, the podcasting. I think the original room, it's lighter in there. I mean, it's literally lighter. Like, the, you could see the audience. Oh, my God, yeah. I mean, it used to be so depressing and dark in there. And there was such, like, you know, 10, 15 people. And it, it wasn't even, a, it was like more of a funeral. Oh. Well, you couldn't see the crowd. Jeez. I yeah, mean, yeah, I would yeah, usually yeah. go on, I would say, like, after 11.30, you know, late night, kind of after the hump thing. Yeah. And I just remember... The the it being dark in there, you couldn't see, you could you could only hear the laugh, you couldn't see, mm -hmm. so you couldn't know if there's a hundred people or twenty, and I just so once they lifted up the lights, and I think they made it's they opened up some seed. I don't know, it's you can breathe more in there. Yeah, I feel, yeah, yeah. In it's that a, OR, yeah, they changed a lot of it, and and just now there's a crowd. There's a crowd. Um, again, I was always doing late night stuff, so for me, it's like kind of the same thing. But still. Um, still late night. Yeah, but still, there's still, you must get more people still, even if even though you're later. Um, yeah, I mean, there's more people there. Yeah, okay, but okay. sometimes I'm going up in front of 15 people at the end, 10 people. Oh, you know, wow. those weird late nights. But I have fun with it. Yeah. The um, yeah, the comedy store. It's uh, it was yeah, it was dark and scary and intimidating. And then just once I got past, it felt better. And then when you would have a couple, I, I would never like go up to the comedians like Rogan or. A, um, dice they would come up to you and say hey you're doing pretty good and then you'd like okay <laughs> <laughs> but I yeah, think yeah. just go, I'm older now so I get I, I mean I go to the comedy store people treat I've kind of like pinched myself I go wow people are like nice to me yeah because you've you've went through the boot camp of it you 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 people know who you are now I guess and yeah. when, when you first got there uh, you know, and even when I first got there, no, I mean, I, I, obviously they don't know who you are. We haven't done anything, and we are, you know, kind of like doormen, right? I mean, we just no one knows us. But then, you know, you put in the work like I did. We didn't quit. Didn't quit. We stayed in the pocket, and now we're in the like glory years of it. I think. Yeah, I mean, I like seeing. Yeah, just it's open. Yeah, it's. Um, the, I, like I said, I like the the specialty shows they have. Yeah, I everyone's in a good mood. They're happy. The, the reason comedy, it's real. You're not on the internet. You're yeah. not watching TV. You're getting the real deal talk. So I think the comedy store and plus Uber now, you don't have to worry about parking. Yeah, you go right up there. It's just a perfect, uh, you know, perfect. Mix. I want to I want to say something about you. <clears throat> what are we at time wise? We're over an hour. Oh, that's okay. amazing. I babbled a lot. No, I love it. This is the great. I this is like one of you're my favorite guest. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite guests. Okay, yeah, look at me yeah. in my eyes. Yes, Bobby. Oh, I forgot he doesn't do that. You're literally one of my favorite guests. I'll take that. I see through your 
hairy sh- shoulders. Yeah, you know me. Your thin lips. We're Southern your, your California. Nose, and I see a child of God in front of me. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> and um, anyone listening now, I'm going to just do this and don't yell at me, but just let's just see what happens. If you're a single girl and you're... <laughs> Were you trying to match make? No, I'm not match making. I'm just throwing something out there. Trying to bypass Bumble. Yeah, yeah. Put into either. And you're and you look in the mirror. Just know that you're an eight. If you're an eight, right? You know. It varies state to state. You know. Yeah, yeah. And you live in California. Mm-hmm. Think about. Yeah. Just think about Brody. Yeah. You know. Let's put that out there. Mm-hmm. Put it on the ether. I'm 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 good with that. So at the end of our podcast, we do thing, a thing called unhelpful advice. It's a it, it's an email, you know. We respond to an email, okay. and you 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 can respond if you'd like to. You don't have to. It doesn't have to be correct. You can say whatever the fuck you want. Okay. Okay. So go ahead. Unhelpful advice with Bobby, Kalila, Brody Stevens, Idle Tom is the devil's playground. Pour it in the cereal. Go for it. I'm getting hair on my shoulders. <laughs> you guys told me to write it down. That was the email? No. <laughs> Dear Tiger Belly, I am a 36-year-old guy and I've been married to my wife 26 years. Uh, she's 26 years old for two years. It was a semi-arranged marriage. We were both sexually inexperienced, but sex during the first year was both frequent and pleasurable. However, after two years, it has pretty much gone from twice a week to once or twice a month. However, my biggest issue is that, just like Bobby, I have suffered from porn-induced ED in the past, and even though I've almost completely given up on porn in the past, past couple of months, it is causing me problems. The main issue is that during sex, I end up visualizing my favorite or recently watched porn scenes in order to remain aroused to, uh, to reach climax. I also visualize celebrities and people I've recently come across in daily life. Example, girls in my gym. I find this disturbing since I feel it is a form of cheating. Should I be worried that I need external stimulus to stay aroused while having sex with my own wife? This is, we'll call him E. It's a difficult question. It's a difficult question. I've been plagued with sexual problems in my life. And I don't really have any answers. That's the advice. <laughs> I, I honestly, I'm, I'm, it's, it threw me full loop. I've done that. Think about another girl when you're with a girl. And yeah. I, it is. I've never done that with Kalila, by the way. Oh, ever. I wouldn't be offended if but you I have, did. Look, look, I've never done it. <laughs> uh, Bobby just winked. I, yeah, I wink because that's like true. I promise. I think you have to be, <laughs> you have to be reasonable about manage your expectations of humans in general and and i guarantee you that your wife's probably imagined someone else besides you too you know um imagine the 1700s or the 1600s right that like when america was a new and people lived in the frontier and you you met a woman and you lived in a cabin in the forest you're not bombarded with other women you're not bombarded with you know advertisements and social media and porn internet any of these things right so when you saw your wife right it was generally like oh my god my wife is beautiful and she's the only girl i've seen in a month okay we live in a different age we're bombarded with sexuality we're bombarded with um, stimulus stimulus and it is very difficult to you know it's just it's it's just a difficult you know time that we're living in. I think I have a friend who is a sex addict, and he went to a rehabilitation facility for a long time, and he said that they were forced to um, they they couldn't do social media. They basically had to remove all stimulus to start to feel to feel things down there again in a genuine way. So um, ahead, no porn, no. <laughs> They would just basically remove a shit ton of stimulus. Mm. I I don't. I mean, I like uh, you know, the porn's fun. Everything, <laughs> everything's there. But I guess I could close my eyes and think of uh, experiences that I've had. You know, you you go back to those those special experiences that you've had with these girls. Yeah. You can use that thought. 
you know, it's it's out there. It's just so much out there, and it's got to warp your brain a little bit. Mm-hmm. You got to be careful. You got. I mean, that's why I said I earlier what this whole Facebook and social media is. Why I needed that buffer yeah. when I started out comedy. I didn't know that social media was a part of the package. I didn't know all. I mean, podcasting's great, and there's benefits I'm sure to Facebook and all that. But it's a lot tedious it's tedious it's never ending and And then you always think like you're always looking for that viral tweet that viral Mm -hmm. photo it's always dangling there right i mean just imagine like i mean i've talked about this about this before you just what the kids are being inundated with like when i was in high school i grew up in the 80s i was in high school yeah me and you 80s it was a field by my house and there was a gigantic rock and if you lifted up this rock there was like a wet hustler. Oh my god! But like ha- most of the pages were stuck together. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was our only exposure to any kind of pornography. A half a mildew breast. You couldn't even see oh. the face because of the wetness of the you know a soil, right? Yeah. And we would jerk off to that mildew breast. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? We'd mm-hmm. rip out you know a page. And <laughs> that's what we were talking about yesterday. How all of this is so available to yeah. us that it it actually takes away feeling horny. Uh, it's like when it's not back in the day it used to feel like it was a little bit laced with rebellion where can i find it where can i find the porn where you know and now it's just so much of it that i'm i kind of don't want to think about sex it's like it's not just porn it's all over i was watching the nba all-star game and the commercials a lot of them are Sex type commercials, butts in the ass cheeks, the halftime show. <laughs> cheeks. <laughs> ass cheeks. No, there is a lot of yeah. uh, sexual sure. imagery. We yeah. all know that. And yeah. It can warp you. And I, I think the uh, the porn, yeah, when I was younger, yeah, you'd have a magazine hidden here and there. And we were around pre internet. We were like the last group to be around pre internet. And I just, I wouldn't want to be a kid today. You see what's going on. And mm-hmm. there, I, I, you know, there's a the, just the cursing and the no rules and the speeding and the mother f and everyone smoking pot. It's gotta you you must have issue. It's hard to deal with adversity. You can't yell at the kids. You can't discipline them. They take away, um, you know, the pledge of allegiance. So now you're seeing. I feel some of those things. You're, it helps you deal with some adversity. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're seeing them not able, they get flustered. To cope. They're not coping. Exactly. The coping yeah. skills aren't there. And you could say, well, we keep God out. But it was just like getting them at attention. We're all work, you know. I yeah. think the kids are losing that. But even just the availability of anything now Easy. ruins it. Like, you know, I remember like when a movie was going to come out, you know, like a deep, let's say I missed a movie like in high school yeah. at the theater. And when is it going to come out on Blockbuster? And you'd get excited, yeah. right? Anticipation. And then yeah. and when it came out, you, and you'd go to the Blockbuster, we all re- we rented it out already. Yeah. And you'd be like, oh, I got to see Goonies or whatever, yeah. right? <laughs> and to. then um, you would wait a month. And then when you got that, you'd come, the excitement of it. Yeah. Today, you know, his new release on iTunes, Lady Bird, uh, Coco. And what was the third three one? Billboard. Three, 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 three billboards. billboards. Three movies I wanted to see done are out. I I I, I bought them. I'm probably not gonna watch them. <laughs> I want to tell this guy yeah. though that like I, I bought them. I don't think yeah. that this issue with the whole porn thing is an indicator of how well your marriage is doing. I think yeah. that happens to everybody in any type of relationship. You know, the sex kind of you know, fades over time. But if you feel strongly about her in, in, in many other ways, I don't think your marriage is in trouble at all. But that was a great email, though. And God bless you and take care. I want to thank everyone that came out to the Irvine Improv this weekend. I, um, I'd never done that good there. Mm-hmm. Every year I go back, and I think it's Tiger, I mean, Sunday night. Picture. Yeah. It, it, great Tiger Belly fans. All weekend. It Also, by the way, that club is weird. So on Friday and Saturdays, when you guys come and you're like, where's Bobby to take photos? I can't go out there. It's like, cause they do it in the middle of the fucking mall. Yeah. yeah where yeah. people are walking by. I did it Sunday night. So the next time I'm at Irvine, just come on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah. I'll do it on Sunday. One show. But like every show sold out. That's a big room. Yeah. yeah. 
And even though you bombed, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you too, George. too George. That takes balls. But you were fucking terrible. <laughs> Bobby, I did uh, Irvine the week before. Oh, you did? With David Spade. Oh, wow. That's a big room. It's, it's a big room, yeah. Well, you know, that's it. See, now when you play the comedy store, do the main room late at night, not that many people, you know? Yeah. I'm lucky if I get 100, but yeah. it's usually like 50 or less. Oh, Spade must have killed it. Well, yeah, Spade did great. They all love him, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you go out, it's a different feel. It's a different, you know, it takes time. It was like, in, I, I, it was uh, stressful for me. Yeah. But then I figured out by the Sunday night, I was kind of like in my zone. I got it. and But it's like I could feel the people. How great is that guy? David Spade's a great guy. He's, I, honestly, he's one of the nicest guys I have ever fucking met. Yeah. I, you know, I was, you know, when I met him a couple of years ago, when he first come, started coming to the comedy stores when I met him, mm -hmm. I was a little intimidated by him. Oh, you were? Yeah, but I'm a fan. Yeah. You know, I, like, I like him. Right. And, um, but as soon as there was a, a establishment, a friendship, mm -hmm. he's just a legitimately great guy. Yeah. Nice guy. Yeah. You're nice too. I cares. think that's a good combination. You too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice guy. Cares. Respected. Funny. Yeah. Yeah. You know, really history. Funny. There's, you know, yeah, history and, uh, stand up. <laughs> he's just, you know, he was on a iconic stand up special, the young comedian. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, he went to Arizona State. I'm from oh, Arizona. Huh? Yeah. So, yeah, he's always been very, yeah, nice, supportive guy. Who did the show with it? Just you and David? And Bobby Miyamoto. Oh, yeah. Are you fighting with him? No. I don't know. <laughs> All the Asians. It's yeah. Fine. Everything's fine. So, yeah, Bobby was great. Yeah, David's been great. And. Like I said, most comedians, uh, they're good people. Even the ones you think, oh, these guys are good. They have good hearts. I mean, you don't have to name any names. Are there ones that you don't like as a person? Um, there's some who are like kind of arrogant or yeah. like don't, you know, give me the time of day. Yeah. And I, I get that. I get that. I don't get it. Oh, you don't? No. Okay. Yeah. Because baseball players talk to me. It's not that. <laughs> UFC it's, fighters. It, it's not that. Clayton Kershaw. Yeah. Here's what I don't like is, is that, you know, you know somebody over the years mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden a little bit of heat comes their way and you can see a little bit of a shift mm -hmm. and I don't like that because at the end of the day who gives a fuck right it doesn't mean anything mm -hmm. right we're all just doing the same thing and um and but what I love is is that when the heat dissipates mm -hmm. and they come back I love that but you know what? No, I love it. I'll, why? Because it teaches them humility? Yeah, that's what you're saying. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. But some people have difficulty. I, I didn't say anything. Well, what do you mean what? I'm going to go check the lineup, see what you're talking about. No, no. <laughs> but pressure can get to people. What do you mean? You know, they get a lot of stuff and they, you know, they're under pressure and they feel. They it's feel... not, dude. Let me, let, let me know. Let me just say this, okay? You, I'm going to bring up Zach's name again. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> I didn't see Zach since the hangover. So when he blew up after the hangover, I didn't run into him one time. Okay. Until I did that movie, um, Keeping, Keeping Up, up, up with the Joneses. Joneses. I, had, I was out in Atlanta for a week, mm -hmm. and I had a scene with him mm -hmm. and John Hamm. Mm -hmm. as, soon he see, as soon as he saw me, he ran up to me, he gave me a hug, and he looked me right in the eyes and said, oh my God, it's so fucking good to see you, right? Genuine. Yeah, my point is this, is, is that that's when I knew that, you know, sometimes people go through the heat of it and they get the attention, but they're still the same guy, okay? And then some people, it just it twists in their mind and they think that there's this, they, they're this thing and at the end of the day, they're not. They're the same douchebag that they were, mm -hmm. right? With just more money. <laughs> but they just have a little bit more money. But I love it when it dissipates. Aww. Well, I, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> don't you? <laughs> don't you laugh? No. Me? You don't like it when a cocksucker gets a little bit of a, like, a cocky thing and they act all fucking prima donna and craze craze. And then all of a sudden the heat dissipates and they come back. Um, I don't know about career wise. I feel like maybe some of the You're a little too burning man for me right now, bro. You think I mean I mean are you 
Are you hippie dick or what? <laughs> I'm positive energy. No, you're no. being no, no, no. You right now, dude. You're being hippie dick. I think. Dude. No, I think... you want me to think of somebody who? I mean, look. If you want to like push buttons and ask me like so and so, he's changed. I'm not saying any confident. names. I'm not saying any names, friend. Well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not I'm throwing anyone. To. I'm not throwing anyone down the in, in the front of the bus, bro. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is this: Don't give me that fucking science eyes right now. Science, beep, 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 science alert. Science alert. <laughs> okay, you give me science eyes right now, bro. All right. One word to you, my friend: Nosotros papaya. Okay. You know what that means? No. We are papaya. I, okay. <laughs> It's <laughs> all right. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Doesn't matter. All right. But what I'm saying right now is, is that for the last hour, all right, I, I've been enjoying it. Okay, and I'm enjoying it now. Also, don't get me wrong, right? But you're just being a little bit too desert, Burning Man hippie. I'm from the desert. <laughs> my, my family's from New Mexico. Uh, okay. I I have. That's south, all you have to fucking say. I have southwestern uh, uh, desert. Uh, all right. Look, Make, makes sense. All right, but then. but be real. When somebody's like on top of the world and they're being a fucking cocksucker. Yes, if they're being a, 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 a cocksucker. And then yes. things start not going good. There's a little bit of feeling of like, there we go. Okay, I have that in terms of maybe somebody politically who spouts off and yeah. then something happens. That kind of stuff. But never that, comic. Like on a personal level, yeah. like... I don't. I don't think I'm at. I don't think my. You mind know what, works man? Me either. <laughs> I think you do. Two peas in a pod. Yes. So, but I you're deep, You have deeper ties at the comedy store. You have more history there. I'm. You know. I'm an enigma. I. I run in my own little. My own little. Uh, Case world. in point. Look at a guy like Sebastian Maniscalco. Okay. What about Sebastian? Sebastian Maniscalco. I knew when he was a waiter at Four Seasons. Me too. Remember Friends, that? Me and Sebastian would do late night sets. Right. Right. And we would have talks in the Comedy Store parking lot. Right. We were friends. Are you friends with him now? Not really. <laughs> wow. Well, wow. not not really. I mean, he's I, married. Moved. Does he on. say hi when you see him? Yeah, but it's not the same. It's not the same. To me, it's still the same. Oh, it is. Yeah. He he'll pull me aside. What's going on? And you'll laugh. We'll laugh together. And he shares me his good news. Mm -hmm. I share my good news. Mm -hmm. We talk about family. It's to me, he's always been private. Yeah, a lot, a lot of young guys go, well, "Yeah, he doesn't really talk much." Yeah, he's private, right? But that has nothing to do with the, if he's a cocksucker. But I know some guys where you would have that banter, all right. And I'm 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 not gonna say a name, but it's a guy that I did Chelsea lately with. You don't say anything, okay? Okay. And um, mm. he wears a cap sometimes. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a clue. Yeah, yeah that's a clue. God. And um, him and I, you know, I, I put him through acting class. You know, like when he was a kid in mm -hmm. open micer, mm -hmm. I would do things like that because uh, I had a little bit of money. So I'm like, he's like, oh yeah, I, I don't know how to even know how to act. Mm -hmm. I go, you should take a class. And he goes. I don't have any money. How much do you need? I think it costs sixteen hundred dollars. You know, I go here. Oh, okay, okay. He goes through the, you know, and then some people they get a little bit of a heat, right? And then they don't give you the time of day. And that's what I'm saying, my friend. And everyone listening to right now, los otros papaya to you. Okay. I want to thank Brody Stevens thank you. for coming in. He was amazing. Do um, you have anything you want to promote? You could find me on Barstool Sports with uh, Dialed In with Dallas Braden. It's every day, 11 to 1 Pacific Time, Sirius, Barstool Channel. I believe I'm going <clears> to <throat> excuse me. have my one-hour special coming out in June or July on all the platforms available. We shot a special about a year ago, and... I think it's going to be coming out, and you can find me at the Comedy Store. I do a show also on all things comedy, Festival of Fun, Festival of Friendship. I'm still working on a title, 25 episodes in. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, yeah, I'm around. I enjoy it. Having a good time. <laughs> yeah. Taking apple cider vinegar. Okay, you already said that. Okay. okay. And <laughs> just being positive. Uh, you already said all that. Well, you know, you have to reiterate I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, But you know what? They go to baseball spring training. It's all reps. It's reps. It's reps. Oh, it's re ingrain oh, it. Ingrain oh, it. Oh, you're ingrain. That's what it is. Yeah. And I learn. 
I learned from you, my friend. Thank you. Okay. You're a great guest. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Any, shows, anything for us? Shows um, for you. Bob. I'm playing oh, the Houston. Um, Houston Improv this week. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, oh, I did that with Spade. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm doing the Houston Improv this weekend. <laughs> Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Come check me out. Um, it'll be fun. And then, um, where am I? I might, because this is three weeks in a row. I, I can't, I need a break. You have a small break, and then you do um, Addison, and then Arlington, Ooh, Virginia, Addison. and then that's it. I think you do El Paso sometime soon. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my God. Right. Oh, they have a Barnes and Noble. <laughs> <laughs> they do a brand new one too, right? Or no? Well, yeah, they had it when I, I played there back in two thousand and one. What El Paso? The comic strip? New. The Barnes and Noble? No, no. the uh, comic strip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw the movie Trading Day. Oh, uh, that was there. a long time ago. That's when it was. Bart Reed. Yeah, Bart Reed. Is, yeah, is yeah. Bart Reed's... Is that who we're going to be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I yeah. love Bart Reed. Bart Reed's comic strip. Yeah, I know who he is. Oh, well. I yeah. just said it. So you're playing there, El Paso. Well, I haven't played it in 18 years. You're coming home. No, it's not home. Oh. But it was it was weird because when I got the call, are you, my manager, are you interested in doing um, El Paso? And I go, <laughs> Bart Reed? I guess, yeah. Yeah, the comic strip. And I go, I thought he hated me. Because you know what happened? 18 years ago, maybe a little, 15 years ago. I don't know when it was, but this is right when I was on Mad TV or something. He offered me my first headlining spot there. So I, I agreed to do it. And then what happened was three days before I was supposed to do it, I booked a national commercial. Mm. So I called him and I said, I just can't do it. He said, what? What am I going to do? You know, and then... There were some things being exchanged, and I felt really fucking bad about it. But, uh, you know, and then I didn't hear anything for the last eighteen years. Whoa! And and then when it came down the pike a couple of days ago, that he reached out, I just said one hundred percent yes, because number one, I like the guy. Number two, you know, it's That's gonna an be eighteen year grudge. It's an eighteen year grudge. <laughs> It's like when I was banned from the Tempe Improv for like 15 years. But they just changed ownership. I know. You go yeah, back yeah. In. well, the guy killed himself. But, oh, uh, my God. And, and, and God bless his soul. Ugh. Okay, but when you know they banned me and then when I was able to do it again, there is a feeling of like I won. But that's it. Okay. Well, can I ask uh, what you got banned for? I showed my butthole. Can't do that in Arizona. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's legal there. I showed my butthole. <laughs> but um, it's, you know, freedom of expression. True. You know, it's art. Um, art. Yeah. And in art, a lot of different things can be revealed. Like, your soul, your butthole. <laughs> your anal lips. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is true. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyway, um, th I'll be in those places. And uh, again, March 27th, my sitcom, watch it. Splitting up together. And yeah. I'll, don't do that. Sorry, I'm really excited about it. No, that doesn't sound like you were. I felt like there was a little bit of resentment. No, I'm there. excited. My mom keeps reminding me. Uh, can I just say this, though? If you have resentment, just say it. I don't have resentment. <laughs> okay? Because I've, I'm feeling a little hostility for it right there. Okay, I'm sorry. You don't have to do that either. I'm not your boss in that way. <laughs> oh okay. Be you. I mean, I thought we had a good time last night. We I had a great time. And everything. All right. Yeah. Anyway, bye. Uh, make sure you follow us on Instagram at TigerBelly, on Twitter at TheTigerBelly, on email, send any questions to uh, thetigerbelly at gmail.com. And uh, make sure you review us on iTunes. Five stars, please. Anything, Kalila? Uh, you can find me in all uh, forms of social media at Calamity K. All right, guys. We'll see you soon. Bye.